Welcome, everyone, and thank you for listening to the Higher Calling Podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and this is your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. And of course, I'm back on this beautiful Monday with Ricky Baez. Ricky, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic, sir. How about yourself? I'm doing okay. It's Monday. Life is good. We're in Florida. So um, right. we're doing all right. We're doing all right. Temperature slowly dropping to the areas that I like. It's after Labor Day, a, couple, a week or so after Labor Day. So it's getting slightly cooler, not that much, but this is my favorite time of year. It's getting there. We're not, it's getting we're, not we're not quite there yet, but we're, we're, we're getting there. I'll take any win, Pete, any win. <laughs> and I'm good. <laughs> So today we uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna switch it up again, um, okay. and and we're gonna talk about something that is is an, a really important part of the hiring process. It's a critical part to get right. It sets the tone for employees uh, when they come in. It also sets the tone for the organization as as a whole. I think, and that is employee onboarding. And as an HR guy, that has to be near and dear to your heart, right? Very, very near and dear, Pete. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's. I've been doing this for twenty years, uh, and and one of the things that I've noticed in human resources is that we focus a lot on recruiting. We focus a lot on the commercial and the advertisement of the the uh, of the allure of you working for us. And what I have seen throughout my career is that we tend to give a lot more tender loving care to that side of the house, and we tend not to give nearly as enough attention to that same allure when people come on board. So to me, this is very much near and dear to my heart. Perfect. So you do, you, you say you do, we do all the work to get them there, you know, and then you cross the threshold and yeah, then like, for, well, forget, 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 <laughs> forget about what was so important. <laughs> well, not, not, not that we forget, right? It, it's that we keep focusing on that next person and that next person. And as we should, right? We obviously should, but let's not forget about the person who come on board. I always joked around with my last team whenever we're at a job fair. And I always tell my team, I'm like, look, my job as the HR leader is to make sure the, the recruitment team does an amazing job. And, and I mean, amazing job to advertise how awesome it is to work here. And then I turn to to the managers, the ops managers on the floor is my job is to make sure that I don't make the recruiters look like liars. Right, right. It's great to work here. Right. And let me come in and let's show them why it's so great to work here. And that is the benefits, the uh, the uh, the career pathing, all those things that the leaders are supposed to do. So my job is twofold. So, yeah, definitely love this topic. I can't wait. So, um, you know, we have to consider right now that a lot of onboarding has shifted and to be virtual. So that's a factor for it as well. But I think maybe that is something we can keep in mind as we go through the individual tips. And we're going to offer six today, I believe, to, right. um, to our listeners. So let's get into it with tip number one. All right, so tip number. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, <laughs> I'm excited, I, it, Pete. And you are excited. It's this is this is your show. So today, so um, so let let's let let's let you go. So what 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 is tip number one, Ricky? So tip number one. Before I say tip number one, let me just explain this. Um, you know, it's uh, when we talked about bringing them on. We talked about. I'm sorry, the interview process. We talked about getting ready for the interview, and we also talked about um, what the hiring authority needs to do during that interview. You know. Once the interview is over and we extend the job offer, the candidate accepts the offer. There's that little time in between, either that week, two weeks, three weeks that I call is the critical period, the critical time. And that's the week where in the back of the candidate's mind, Pete, they're thinking, I don't care how great the interview went, but in the back of the mind, they're thinking, did I make the right decision? Did, did, is this the right thing? I mean, I don't care how great it went. People still think that. It is our job with a robust onboarding process. It is our job to remove that doubt. And here's how we do it. The first tip is you follow a structured approach, a training plan. Don't just roll that dice, have a robust training plan ready to when that person comes on board. So what does that look like? That looks like, you know, making sure what your day one looks like your day two, day three, that first week, that second week, that third, all the way to the end of those 90 days. So have a structured approach, a training plan to make sure you're ready for that candidate before they come on board. If there's a recurring theme throughout this season of our podcast so far, I think it's preparation. Yep. And it's, you know, we talk about preparation for candidates prior to an interview, 
preparation, you know, and in, in even knowing, you know, how long it's going to take to drive uh, to work. Same thing with hiring managers need to be prepared. And so this is really just, a, you know, a natural step uh, in, in, in that preparation of being ready for, for this new employee to come in and, um, you can either get it really right or really wrong, I think, through through that, you know, that first day and, and then and then first week and, and, and then carry on to the first month. So um, a lot of it is training. A lot of it also has to do with just almost having a checklist of, of sorts of, you know, that certain things have to happen each each time you bring a candidate on board. Um, you know, the, the paperwork doesn't change that much unless, you know, the, the government changes something or your internal processes change. So it really does make sense to, to, to have a checklist. Uh, is there any other tips that, that, that you'd offer about this in this area in particular? No, absolutely. So, so once you got that checklist, that plan on board, remember I talked about a few minutes ago, remember like if it was that long ago, uh, about that, that magical period between the time they said yes and the time they start. You can't forget, I know that time is boring for us from an HR point of view. We can't forget about the candidate during that time. So what does that mean? If they put in a two week notice, don't just forget about that candidate until that Friday before they start. Keep in contact with them, have regular cadence, yeah. regular check-ins, whether there is a text, whether it's an email, a phone call, not every day, right? You don't want to come across too overbearing, but you want to let the candidate know, you want to continually continue to remind the candidate they made the right decision. Because the less you talk to them, the more of those negative thoughts go into the head to see if that's the right choice or not, because change is, is, is difficult. Well, right now in this world where we know that it's an employee's market, that um, you know, good employees are, are very hard to come by, harder than normal, given the imbalance in, in the number of job openings versus the number of uh, people who are actually on, on the job market, um, there's probably an opportunity for counter offers to happen pretty frequently right now, too. I mean, that opportunity always exists. But now more than ever, I bet it's happening with some 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 frequency. So I think that communication along the way is going to help a lot, a lot there too. Absolutely. And, and, and again, just every other day or so, just uh, how I do it, Pete, I like to, you know, it, it's every two or three days to kind of let them know, Hey, you know what? We're really excited. Watch this video about our organization or watch this about this organization. you know, just little tidbits of information to keep them engaged a week before I send them in an, an, an email letting them know I'm we we can't wait to have you start on board. Here's some things for you to consider. We're seven days away from the big day, um, and then some some little tidbits of information on what to do on day one. Couple of days after that, hey, send me a little you know um um headshot of yourself. Tell me some you know about me interesting facts because this is what I'm going to use for new employer orientation to introduce you to the team. And then finally on that very last day, hey, we're, we're ready to go. I'm telling you, Pete, that candidate is going to be excited on day one. Actually, we did that today. Yeah, I, want, I was going to I was going to yeah. put you on the spot and say yeah. that that is something that you've brought to Four Corner, which has been a great and you know, very welcome addition to our process of introducing the candidate uh, on you know, our Monday morning kickoff call. You orchestrated that call. You put a, a presentation together that has the 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 candidate's picture on it like you just said i I think it's a great thing um you know any advice to others who want to incorporate that on what they should look to include so yeah so so thank you for that because not everybody is going to want to put all of the all of their stuff out there right so be careful because if you ask for that information a picture and personal information. All I was asking is, do you have any pets? What's your favorite restaurant? And what's your favorite color? Just those things, right? Don't go too deep into it. If the candidate or the new employee for that matter, is a little bit uneasy, back off a little bit, right? Just just, just start really light. Because some people are introverts, and they may not want to, uh, you know, to to give everything out there until they get to meet the entire team. So let the candidate drive that. Now, real quick, Pete, because you you did mention a lot of this is happening virtually now. Normally, this is done right in person, right? So you get all the things ready to go until they come in ready in person. You got to be even more more frequent with your communication when it's virtual, right? Because even when, when it's virtual, you got to keep keep that cadence of communication up. That way, they see 
if it's in front of them, they'll see that you're still as interested in them as they are in us. You've got to keep that going. So let the candidate drive how those questions are answered. But let me tell you, there is no better way to get somebody started in a brand new organization and breaking that ice than talking about your favorite sports scene, your favorite color, and your uh, and uh, your favorite food. I mean, why not? Who wouldn't want to do that? No, it's fun. It, it, <laughs> it helps, and I like it. it, it and having the virtual um, you know, consideration, you know, taking place, right, and not just letting this person come in under the radar really does make a big difference right now. And all of that um, is is part of planning. Again, you're you're, yeah. you're ready for for that employee on, on day one, and 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 what a warm you know thing to feel for your first day at a new job that um, to know that it wasn't done on the fly, to know that <laughs> they were eagerly anticipating your arrival. Um, so let's call that tip two then. So first one is be, you know, ha have a structured plan, be consistent with it. Mm -hmm. Tip two, make sure the communication is, is in place leading up to that first day. And then of course, on the first day is, is really important. But there's, there's still opportunity to, to, to take advantage of that downtime in between the acceptance and the start. What could you offer as far as uh, advice on what an HR department should do to prepare behind the scenes, perhaps? Uh, uh, yes, sir. So this is this is the part that really gets me going, Pete, because um, there to me personally, there's no bigger waste of time than having somebody start on day one. And the first part of the morning is wasted with, you know, equipment issue credentials. They can log into anywhere because they don't have those credentials. Um, so the best thing an HR department can do before anybody starts is to get all the behind the scenes stuff done beforehand, the onboarding documentation, getting them set up for direct deposit, all those, all those paper, all that paperwork they have to fill out all the way till day one, right? Because I-9s is different. We got to be careful with I-9s. You don't want to do I-9 documentation too early. Because remember, you got three days from there in case they don't have that documentation. They got three days to provide the necessary documentation for us to determine if they're eligible to work in the United States. So you do everything except the I-9, which that you do on day one. But it doesn't hurt to give them some information beforehand to let them know exactly what kind of documentation they need. So if you call them a week before to say, hey, next week on day one, you need X documentation, either one from list A or one from list B and C, if you have them looking for that a week in advance, nine times out of 10, you're not gonna have any issues to wait for them to submit it after they start because they've already started digging for those things. So give them the information they need of what kind of documentation they're going to need to get everything ready for day one. So let me ask you about I-9s in the virtual <laughs> world that we're in, times of COVID, right? Yes. I-9s are, are a very serious thing. Yep. The government takes them seriously. Every employer should, should do the same. How, how, how are HR departments handling that in these, in these virtual times right now where not everyone is on site? You, you can't get your eyes on the documentation that you're normally required to. How, um, how is that being handled right now? So let me first start off by saying I'm not an attorney. And Pete, you're not an attorney, right? Last time I'm time. not. You know, nope. We are not attorneys here. So nope. what I'm about to say is not <laughs> legal advice, right? Um, this is just for informational purposes only. So pre-COVID, what we had to do, we had to visually inspect the documents. We have to touch it, we have to feel it. We have to make sure that the person pictured in that document is the person that's sitting or standing right in front of you. COVID came and they said, hey, we're gonna do things a little bit differently, right? So uh, about, about a year and a half ago when the COVID situation started becoming really serious for us here in the United States and for the workforce, um, we just didn't know what we needed to do. We, we were waiting from some, um, um, some guidance from Homeland Security. And they did give us that guidance. They said that, look, can we, can we hold it up to a camera in a virtual environment so we can see it? Yes, we can, that we can do. But that's not the answer to the question. That is a temporary solution to a temporary problem, right? So right now, right now, the Department of Homeland Security said that up until the end of this year, now this is fresh off the press about a week ago, up to the end of this year, you can still continue to do it virtually, meaning you hold it up in front of the camera, you get to see that information to make sure that they are the person they're saying that they are, um, and you're able to process the I-9 documentation that way. Now, 
Um, or another way you can do it, if they're virtually somewhere else or even in another state, you have to get an agent to work on your behalf uh, to say, here you go, somebody in your organization in your organization that you trust that they're able to verify that information. Um, and But most likely people are just looking at it through the camera and making sure it's good. We can still do that, Pete, until December 31st of this year. And that, and you mentioned the change. I just want to make sure that that point is is one that we don't go by too quickly. It was that temporary exception was supposed to expire August 31st, I believe, and it was just extended until the end of the calendar year, which is which is a big deal. It is actually it was extended to March of this year, and then it got extended again until August 31st. And then I, at, at 6 p.m. on August 31st, on the very day, uh, the very uh, they sent another extension until the end of this year. So that's December 31st of 2021. We're able to do that. But this next part is key, folks. And, 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 and listen to what I'm telling you. Um, come January 1st, anybody that has come on board during the pandemic and you've done that, that virtual inspection and they're still employed with you, from the first until three days later, you have that three day window, you've got that long to verify everybody physically that come on board that came on board during the pandemic. So what does that mean? That means don't wait until December 31st to start inspecting those documentations. start doing it right now. Start doing it right now. Even if you think the person is going to leave later on, it doesn't matter. Start inspecting those documentations right now because once you get to January 1st, a lot of things can happen. Maybe this person can't come in. That person lost their documentation. You've got to make sure that those, those things are physically inspected between January 1st and January 3rd. Don't wait until then. Start doing it right now. Save yourself a lot of headache later on. Well, that's a lot of work that, yes, that needs to take place. <laughs> <laughs> Do you... What do you expect that there may be yet another extension? I mean, you can't count on that, but it, this is a, what's your personal take? Or is this, you know, we hear the phrase new normal thrown around a lot. Do you think this could become the new normal? Because look, companies aren't going back to the way that, that they used to operate. The virtual employee is here to stay. I don't think anyone would dispute that. So times are changing. Do you think this may be one of those things that changes with it? You know what, Pete? It's a, uh... I wasn't expecting that question, but I'm going to answer it like this. One of three things are going to happen here. Just one of three things, right? Either A, they'll extend it, right, for another six months or, or whatnot. Um, or B, they'll say, no, we're going to continue to, uh, to, to, um, to do it January 1st. You better have everything ready. Or C, they'll change the law. I doubt it's going to be C. But here's what's going on. This extension was put in place with the understanding or the hope that we'll be in a much better place, a much better handle for this pandemic. Um, I can only speak for Florida. I can, in Florida, it's a little bit, you know, wiggly, right? It's, it's gone up, now it's slowly tapering off. So I don't know what's gonna happen, to be honest, in the next, you know, three months with, with this process. If this pandemic keeps going up the way we have seen in the past three months, I anticipate either it's going to be extended again or they changed the law. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, mean, the law, but. <laughs> I get the sense that this particular one, it, you know, I give whoever is in charge of this at Homeland Security, I give them credit for realizing it, it's going to create a big challenge in the marketplace. And I don't think they're in the, the business of trying to make life more difficult than it needs to be on employers and employees. Um, but it is a it is a difficult thing. No one has a great answer to it yet, as far as I can tell. In, what I'm specifically referring to is being able to process an I-9 under normal circumstances, under normal requirements for virtual employees. There's just no clean, easy way to do it right now. I think personally, no, if, if when Homeland Security is listening, I think times need to change along with the technology that we have available. And um, you know, the, the cameras seem to work pretty darn well. Don't you agree? Or you I, might not agree. No, no, no. I, it's to be honest, I like, I like the whole camera thing, you know, the, it, it's a, it's, I don't know why we haven't done it um, up until, I mean, actually, I take it back. I do understand there's a lot of opportunities out there so people could doctor, doctor those documents. I mean, but then they can doctor. Those and, exist and, anyway. Yeah, they exist <laughs> anyway, right? So, yeah. it, you know, it is what it is. That, that's my, that would be my prediction is that we never go back to how we were. Uh, I mean, it's just too impractical, but Let's not get too hung up on that. We, we were back to, we were talking about 
being prepared uh, or doing what you can in advance of that first day happening kind of behind the scenes. We talked about paperwork. I also think we need to look at, at equipment and any other you know, software services, tools. I think you mentioned passwords. You know, having all of that set up in advance is so big, also relevant to employees who are virtual. You may need to ship them equipment. It may not be as simple as a person showing up on day one. And we'll keep using this example since we uh, since it's right in our face. But our employee who started today is virtual. Uh, she's in Atlanta, so we having her computer and you know, all her equipment ready to go today is one thing. But she needed it in her possession in order to use it, so it had to be shipped prior to her start date. And that's a you know, whether it's an IT department, operations department, combination of the two that's a change for, for how they're used to working. And, and, you know, it's another you know, thing that's come along through COVID. So easy to, easy to handle in theory, if you're prepared and thinking, but if you're not communicating internally, that could catch you off guard in a bad way. So let me say this, because a lot, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking right now, well, Ricky, what, so, so you're going to ship that, that information, that packet, that all that equipment to somebody, you didn't even know if they're going to start. And I've had, I've had that, that, inf that uh, answer thrown back at me. And what I say is, I completely understand, you know, some people, again, you and I talked about this about a month ago, because I just found out what the word ghosting meant, and I didn't know what it was, uh, you know, so a, a candidate might ghost us. Uh, so what happens if that happens, you just send the $800 laptop or $1,200 laptop out there, and you may not get it back. Look, here's the way I look at it. I rather, I rather send the laptop over to somebody in the off chance they don't start and then work on getting that information back. I rather do that and have some a great first day for somebody than use that as a blanket as to not to do it and we start somebody on the wrong foot. To me, the risk is worth it. Other people may think differently, but I am I am more I rather err on the side of that the person is going to follow through and start <laughs> than otherwise. So I rather go that route to be honest. Just send it ahead of time. That's what we did. We sent it Wednesday last week. She received it on Friday or Saturday, got everything ready to go, and she was ready to rock and roll today on Monday. So from an HR perspective, I completely understand where you're coming from. Uh, from a financial perspective, there may be an alternate view out there at some yeah. organizations. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> make, your, make, make your decisions, uh, the, the decisions that make the most sense for you uh, and your organization. That's what we're doing uh, with our in, internal folks, to Ricky's point. We, we want them to be... Uh, not only productive and, and ready to go from day one, but we want them to feel uh, welcome. And that is something that we're more conscious of than we needed to be when everyone was in the office. So while we do hire um, and train in our office, uh, for some employees, hiring in virtual employees is something that we've embraced over the past couple of years. And it is a different consideration. So we, we've chosen to, to take that route as Ricky described it, but that may not be prudent for everyone. True. Um, as long as you have a plan and think about it up front, I think that's the most important part. So if your employee is not going to have equipment on that first day, just make sure they're not surprised. Make sure that their expectations were in line with whatever your process is. I think that's the most important part of this. Right. So Absolutely. Would you, yeah. No, yeah, because it, it's you're trying to let them know they did not make a mistake coming over here. You want to eliminate that thought in their head of wondering why they came over to the organization. And it's just backing up what we've been telling them from day one, from the day they said, I'm going to apply for this position. Absolutely. So let's call that tip number three. That's right. Tip number three. Do as much as you can in advance, prepare for, for that first day. What's next? So what's what's number, number four? four. Yep. So, they get to the so day one starts you do your kickoff meeting or whatever you do on that day and you, you, you here's how i like to do it i like to spend a little bit of time with them to get to know them personally they get to know me personally to break that ice get to know them as a human being but this this part is crucial once you start getting into the uh, into the intricacies of what onboarding is going to look like that first that first tip we gave you make sure you got a structured approach make sure you have a training plan show them that training plan let the candidate i keep saying candidate they're not a candidate let the new employee know let the new employee know what they can expect during training for the next 
30, 60, 90 days. Let them know what that roadmap is going to look like all the way into the 90 day review if you have one, which you should have one, right? So it, it, to me personally, and I'm talking about Ricky here, there's nothing worse into blindly going through a process, not knowing what the next day is going to look like, not knowing what I'm going to be covering next week, not knowing, just not knowing what's happening tomorrow. Make it as easy as possible for that candidate to fully understand what the, what what they're going to experience in these next 90 days of training. And here's what that does, Pete. What that does is it once once the the, the I almost said it again. Once the employees make <laughs> sees what they're expecting, what they are going to go through, they make an emotional connection with it. They know what it is. They've accepted. They visualize it in their mind. They're going to be more successful with it if they fully understand what's coming down the pike. So give them a roadmap, a roadmap and explain what those first 90 days are going to look like is tip number four. It's a great idea and one that each organization can implement in their own unique way. And maybe it's not 90 days, maybe it's longer, maybe maybe it's yeah. maybe it's only 30, but the the greater you know, amount of visibility you can provide for, for that new hire, you, you said it gives them comfort uh, with what's ahead in an un, what's an otherwise uncomfortable situation, you, even even under the best of circumstances, there's some trepidation that's in place when you're walking into a new organization. It, it's different. You're you're there with probably a lot of things on your mind as a new employee, and to whatever degree the company or organization can can take away unnecessary anxiety all the better. So lay that out as, as best you can and everyone wins. And now the, and what's great too, is that you, you, you can pull in other parts of the organization through that. And so it's not just that training group uh, by laying out that, that plan, we recommend uh, giving an opportunity to have meetings set up with other people and other groups within the organization as part of that. Um, but you know, you don't have to do that. It's a, it's a tip that we, we try to, um, uh, to adhere to ourselves as well as, um, you know, give advice. If anyone is, is, is asking, <laughs> we think that's an important thing, set up meetings with other parts of the organization, but lay it all out for your, for your new hire. It's a great tip. There's, there's probably nothing I even needed to say that you, on that point, you said it all. And Pete, real quick, so just just looking through all these, and I started thinking about something that happened to me about 10, 10 years ago. And uh, this this all goes back to the very first point, it, which is to have a plan, have a structured approach, and make sure everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing. Um, I got this job offer with this one company. I'm not going to mention it. Um, and uh, I was want to know how I how I found out I got an offer. I got an invitation via email to new employer orientation. <laughs> Great. And I'm like, oh, I, why am I going to, I got the job and I started, to, yeah, yeah. So and so didn't call you? No, <laughs> she didn't call me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No one still called me. So yeah, it, it's, it's, it's just thinking about this. I'm sorry to derail. It's just, it reminded me of that one instance. So I'm, so I was, I'm sorry. That was tip number four. <laughs> so which so was, your, your, your scenario was the opposite of the guy in office space, Milton, who had lost his job, but, but no one told him. No he told them they just keep moving him to the basement and all he it, cares it, about is a stapler is a stapler Spoiler alert. <laughs> it's exactly. a great movie. well hopefully they had a stapler waiting for you on on, <laughs> on day one when you I arrived wish I did. <laughs> oh man okay so that was number four give a roadmap explain what training is going to look like all right tip number five pete another one near and dear to my heart we'll go with it let's hear it check in on them regularly check in on them. Yes, you've got an awesome plan. Yes, you've communicated with them to make sure they're ready um, on day one. Yes, you did as much as possible behind the scenes, you give them a roadmap. Don't forget about them still. Check in on them. that first week, you should start the day with them, you should end the day with them on week one. Right? Every single day. Now you don't have to do this. That's what I have done in the past. And it has worked at the end of the week, review what that week, um, uh, what they did make sure you're there for any questions and let them know more granular what the following week is going to look like. Now, this is where you as the hiring authority, the trainer or the big buddy program or HR, whoever is in charge of this process, you should gauge it. The following week, should you still start with them every day and end every day? 
Not necessarily. It depends on how, how well they picked up the information from week one and how they're trending. But at the very least, once, twice, three times a week, all the way to the very end, make sure they have somebody to connect with that knows the intricacies of the organization. Yes, I don't care if they have 50 years experience in IT, they have zero years experience with your organization and how they do that IT. So you got to yep. make sure there's somebody there with the organization to answer all of those questions about the organization to help them help him or her assimilate to the culture. Yeah, don't assume. Don't, don't assume that the <laughs> that things are going well. Don't assume that the the plan is being followed. If you're the manager of, of this new hire, then that that's who I would recommend check in. A lot of times, it, every organization is so so unique in how they do this. But uh, in in our own internal organization, we have a a full time trainer who yes. essentially has responsibility for new hires for their, their first couple of days for sure, but their manager should still check in. You know, maybe HR should, can still check in if, it, if, if there was a recruiter involved. We do that for our external hires. That, that's a big part of what, of what we try to do, even though we're outside the organization when we place someone at one of our clients we always talk to them at the end of their first day. We want to know how it went. We always talk to them at the end of their first week to find out how it went because we don't want to assume that things are going well. Yep. And, and we hope that they will. We expect that they will, but we can't leave that to chance. And we, we want to know because too often you see problems that could have been solved or could have been avoided just by communicating and you don't want to find out when it's too late. That's, that's a message. So don't assume <laughs> I, I keep saying it the same way. Cause I don't know a better way to phrase it. And especially right now in this, uh, you know, pandemic type of a workforce, even more so, right? Because even before that pandemic, it was really easy to go by that new associates cubicle or office. Hey, everything good. Everything awesome. Roger that great. Or see them by the water cooler or the cafeteria or the, the break room. You don't plan that. Now that that element is not there, that variable is not there in the equation, you have to make a conscious effort to call that person, go on Zoom, go on Teams, go on whatever you need to go on to make sure you make that concerted effort to make sure you check in on that person because the fact that we're not all in one space like we used to be has changed the whole dynamic and how we interact with each other. You have to account for it. You yes. have to account for it. And even someone like me, who admittedly is, is you're better at this stuff than I am. You're 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 better at, at you know thinking of culture and and in all of those things, uh, where I tend to be more focused on just you know with blinders on with the business aspect of what we're doing. Um, but I when I think of myself as an as a new employee in the roles that that I've had uh, prior to starting Four Corner. That would have felt very isolating. It would have felt um, it, it would have been it would have been awkward. It would have been it would have been tough. And so, if you don't know who to pick up the call, if you don't have a peer to turn to, the person you sit next to. I mean, I could go down the line of every job I've 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 had since my first one at fifteen. I always needed someone to turn to. You know, where, where's the bathroom? Where's the? Um, I guess when you're working at home, you don't need to ask that question, but. You know, where, where, you do, where do you, I got questions. Where you know, where do you where do you go for simple simple things? Yeah. Um, you know, information and no, in, you know, every, I, I doubt there's a company who covers every single question that could be asked because there's an infinite number of things yep. that a new employee could wonder. It, it may be very obscure at times, but it's important to that person and it's important to their comfort. So you really have to go above and beyond what you think is necessary probably, or what I would think is necessary. I mean, I've really changed my thinking in this past year and a half period of, of, of being mostly virtual, which is how I would describe our current yeah. situation where, you know, you can, our employees can work in the office all day if they, they want to, but many choose to not work in the office at all, or we're hiring outside of the area uh, where folks could live anywhere in the world. And we need to still make sure that they're involved and uh, feel comfortable in a way that we just wouldn't have had to think about when we were all in the office. 
So you said it really quick. I want to make sure people hear that, Pete, because you said something really important that a lot of organizations do not do. Most organizations either they keep employees home or they bring them all in or they do a hybrid that they have to follow. At Four Corner Resources, you're, the option is yours. As a recruiter, as an employee, you want to come into the office, come on into the office. We got everything you need. As it, it, if you want to stay at home and work from home, that's perfectly okay. You have the option. Just letting people know there because we're hiring, Pete. And we want to make sure we are indeed. <laughs> I want to make sure people fully understand that that you know we 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 want you to focus on the, on your talents that we bring you into the art this organization for. And we don't want to muddy the waters with should you have to come into the office or not. It's definitely your call. Yeah, we you know, we're fortunate to be in a situation where we can offer the best of all worlds in that regard. Not every organization can, depending on the job, it may not yep. be practical uh, to do if if it requires being hands-on in person. Uh, but it's, 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 even though I would consider our situation to be a luxury, uh, it still comes with its own potential pitfalls, uh, like we talked about. So for me, I have to acknowledge that this is not as natural where I'm, you know, I've, I'm well into my career. Uh, I've, I've started Four Corner 16 years ago. So I've been in this role for a long time now where um, the, what was important to me as a young professional is no longer what's important to me now. What what's, was necessary for me as a young professional isn't what's necessary for me now. But we have to make sure that no one suffers as a result of that. So what should be a good thing can be a bad thing if it's not administered correctly, if, if the organization doesn't, um, you know, isn't isn't very conscious of the difference. I think that's I think it has to start there and then act accordingly. But you know, it's it's a different world and we're all still trying to you know learn you know where our place is in it, I think. Um, you know, good and bad. Most of us are. <laughs> Most of us are having a little bit, you know, just a little off the track, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, right. so okay, so we know that um, we need to give the new, new hires attention is tip number six. So we're going to do all those things right. From the start, we're going to be structured. We're going to have a plan. But as I think we've alluded to a few different ways, you, you want to make sure that your intentions you know, were actually, actually hit the mark. So well, any thoughts on that? And I know I'm setting you up for, for a, to hit this one out of the park because I know, I know what your answer is going to be without even asking. <laughs> so... I'll say this, we, we do a good job. We do a good job at putting everything together and making sure it is the most concise, the most amazing product we can give our brand new employee. We're prepped, we're communicating, we're, we're, we're getting everything done. We're showing you everything you need for you to be successful. But that's from our point of view. Once you get towards that end, there's nothing wrong in asking that new new employee, either the first month, second month, third month, feedback. Get some feedback. How was their experience like? We know what we saw, but we want to see what they saw, the, the recipient of all this planning. And to me, that is crucial because if we miss the mark somewhere and we don't know, making sure that new employee gives us that information so we can adjust what we need to adjust so it can be just that much better for the next person. So here's what we got to be careful though, because if you come too strong and you, you don't make it comfortable for the new employee to let to, to, to give you all this information, they're going to say, boss, everything's great. Everything is just awesome. You've got to create an environment where the employee is comfortable enough that early on in the game to give you honest feedback. So set it up in a way that whatever feedback they give you, we're not going to look at them a different way or they feel odd by giving us that information. But if you get that feedback, you implement it, you're only helping yourself and you're helping the organization and that future employees coming on board. Absolutely. That's it. I thought you were going to say survey, Ricky. I no, thought you were going to no, say I use wasn't. surveys. <laughs> That's, I, that's your thing. Uh, you know what? That's my thing when it's a lot, right? But if it's like two or three people, hey, let me take you to Dunkin' Donuts real quick uh, and let's have some some conversation. Hey, should we send Dunkin' Donuts a, a bill? I used their name. Maybe. So we, 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 need, yeah, yeah, we, we need a few more subscribers, <laughs> we I <do>. think. <laughs> 
just then, one more. We should be all right. Yeah. Um, uh, we we need a few a more. Survey. I think a good conversation would suffice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll go. We'll go with that then. But you, but you do, you do, you know, it, it is important. And it, it's back to what we said a few minutes ago. I you know, said, don't assume, don't, you know, yeah. don't never, never do that. And as we've acknowledged, we're learning as we go with how to do um, this to, you know, in our case, combining on site onboarding, as well as virtual onboarding. The needs are different. The in, every individual is unique, and and so we may think we have you know ten out of ten things right, and there may be you know a new employee who thinks we've completely missed the mark in an area. It doesn't mean we're going to accommodate every unique request, but we do want to be aware of it, yeah. and that's always important. And I, I would give that advice if there are any employees listening who aren't involved in HR, maybe new employees, and if it's one of our employees, this goes for you in particular. You know, share share that information. Your employers want it. Your, your, your HR department wants it. Your manager wants it. They need it. Uh, what they, they you know, no one wins if an employee is uh, sits silently with um, you know frustrations or potential complaints. It doesn't mean your employee can or employer can or will act on it, but. I'd be hard pressed to come up with an example of when that feedback isn't the honest feedback. Sometimes the harsh feedback isn't wanted, right? And so, yeah, those are very different things in my mind. Wanting the feedback, acting on the feedback, it's, they're valuable. The, the feedback is valuable in both cases. And so when you ask those questions, give an honest answer. Yep. You know, you, you temper it if you're very angry. You know, don't be emotional in doing so. Uh, but if you think something went poorly, communicate that in a professional way. Your, your, your employer will appreciate it. That's the key, in a professional way, right? Which, which, I mean, I don't think we, we have to go too deep into that. But, yes, you create an environment. You as an HR, as a business leader, uh, or, or just regular employees, you create an environment where they're able to convey that without any fear of retaliation. Oh, my God, they're going to think I'm complaining too much. No, that's not the case. you got to set it up in a way that they take that ball and run with it and score. That's that's its own challenge. That is not a small thing. It, it it is easier said than done. And I would say that you know that's a, something that I've even considered over the years is how to how to get that how to get the truth. You know how to get. It, it, I've I've been told Pete, they're gonna you know, you're gonna be the last one to hear it because you own the company. Well, I want to be the first one to hear it because I own the company. It, you know, I want to know if we have a gap if we have. Um, you know, a glaring you know, problem in, in how we do anything. And I would want our clients to share that information. I'd want our candidates externally who we recruit to share. And of course, it goes without saying, I'd want to know from our internal employees if we were missing something. And in every case, client, candidate who we work with on, on the staffing side or internal employee, doesn't mean we're going to be able to accommodate every request, but we will always want to consider it and make sure Whoever um, you know, has has that you know, potentially negative feedback, if if we're going to call it that, understands the why behind the situation. And I, I just I don't know this to be definitively true, but I think every organization wants to wants to operate the same way. Yes, yes. easier the, for other, some than others, but they all want to operate that way. I believe at least every organization that where I've that I'm that I know of, right? Everyone everyone intends to do things well doesn't always happen every time. So ask your employees for the feedback. Employees give your employer the feedback when asked. I think that's the yes. that's the message, right? Yeah. And and again, what you're looking for, you're looking to see that if what you as an organization are putting out is doing what it's supposed to do. Right? Correct. That's all you're looking for. It's that it's doing what it's supposed to do. Folks, if you don't ask for that feedback, you're gonna spin your wheels. Right? Ask for that feedback. And don't be afraid of it. Let them give you that feedback. Don't don't take it personally. Take it and and run with it. Go with um with whatever team you have to go with to see if we can do something with it. And you just touched on it right now, Pete. It's it's important to let them know why we should do it. And but if they give us um some feedback on something we can't do, it's equally as important to let them know why we can't do it. Correct. Right? They should know the the yeses and the noes. It just builds that relationship and telling you folks, we do this, we do these six things. You're going to have a, somebody who's going to come on board. They started on the right foot 
they got the right cadence and they got the right support and they're going to last long with your organization. I guarantee it. All right. It guarantees it. So that, that's, that, right. that's a good, that's a point See to wrap approval, up, man. I think on the guarantee. <laughs> I did right. not guarantee it. Ricky guaranteed it's, it. I guarantee it. It is all right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. So here's what we talked about. Follow a structured approach training plan. Make sure you communicate with them, keep in contact with them until they start. Get as much done as possible before they start the equipment, logging credentials, etc. When they come on board, show them that roadmap. Let them know what they can expect during training. Check in on them regularly. And last but not least, ask that ever crucial feedback and let them know why you can do something and why you can't do something. That will build that brand loyalty like you would on boot. There it is. Six tips for onboarding new employees that every hiring manager should know. I think we hit the mark today. I think we did, sir. Yes, sir. So well, we welcome the feedback. Yeah. If anyone thinks we, we missed something obvious or you disagree with any of these, we would love to have that. We hope that it's not necessary to get that message, but just like we talked about, we want that feedback too on, on the podcast. We're getting great feedback so far, but we could yep. use more. And as always, if you have tips, then please, or not tips, but if you have ideas for future shows, we want to hear those too. We can, um, we, we, we welcome that. So uh, we're not running out of ideas anytime soon, but we could always jump uh, one of our planned topics and, and do something timely. So hit us up at higher calling at fourcornerresources.com. We'd love to hear from you. And also, wherever you grab your podcast, whatever platform you got, whether it's Google, whether it's Apple, go to the go to the podcast section, download us, subscribe, give us a like, there's a little area where you can write a review. Let us know what you think. We want to know what's on your mind. So if, if, uh, if you're not able to send us an email, give us a like, let us know, share our podcast with your network. Trust me, they're going to love it. I know you love it. Pete and I love it. What's not to love? Just share it and like it. Trust me, you'll feel better at night. There you go. Thanks for listening. Thank you, folks. Drive safe. Until next time, good night.